Hello, my name is Jacob Hofer. My name is David Hamlin. And this is Project One for Artificial Intelligence. So we have, this is our program. We wrote it in Java. We have our main app class here that is the driver for the entire project. We basically just start out by having a list of all of the different uh, boards that we load from. And we can see over here, we've actually got them loaded. If we open up one of them, they're just simple CSV files provided for the project that represent a Sudoku board. We are going to loop through all of them and we're going to run each of them through all of our different solvers that we've created extending from this Sudoku solver class. In order to do that, we actually have to parse it into a data structure, which is our board class. The Sudoku board class takes in a string that is an input file, and it parses, parses it in a buffer reader that uh, takes the input file and puts it into a 1D array of um, cell objects. And each cell object contains different values, uh, such as the actual value and also where it is on the board and if it was a starting uh, cell or if it was a cell that's modifiable. And so then we just keep going through, resetting the board, solving it with each of them, and then we output the number of decisions that it takes. And at the very end, we also print out three different solutions. The one from backtracking, which is almost always the exact same, assuming our backtracking works, which it does. And then our annealing solution and our genetic solution, which are often different from backtracking as they are just close approximations. So let's go and actually run our code now. Now... Our code takes a little while to actually run because of annealing and backtracking, so we will let it run for a bit and come back once it is finished. So as we can see, uh, the output finished, and uh, the output each line is the score, the number of decisions that each algorithm took, and the best end score is if the simulated annealing or the genetic algorithm uh, wasn't able to find a solution, then that is the number of conflicts left after um, it finished running. So for example, on evil P5, simulated annealing um, ended with 14 conflicts and the genetic algorithm ended up with zero conflicts, which means that it found a solution. And if we go and look, we can first verify that the backtracking solutions all match. Uh, and down here, this is what the solution found out by all three backtracking algorithms was. And we can look and see the genetic solution actually matches that perfectly because it also found a solution and there were zero conflicts. Whereas if we look at the annealing solution, it varies a decent amount because there was 14 conflicts. And if we scroll up, we can see that this happens for every single puzzle with varying different results. Sometimes we get, you know, better scores and worse scores depending on the different algorithms. Since they're both random, they're going to give us different outputs. Uh, but every single time, all three of the backtracking solutions gave the exact same answer. And any time that we had a zero for one of the uh, local search algorithms, such as the best end score, uh, on this one, we can see that our backtracking solution and our genetic solution were the same to further verify that our backtracking also indeed worked. And every single algorithm has the capability of finding a solution, but due to the randomness and the runtime of the annealing and genetic algorithm, sometimes our output shows that they got really close, but they didn't get it a solution that time around. And that is our project. Thank you for watching.